tonight's special guest is Larry Morris. Back in the 1960s, Larry was the lead singer in the pop group called Larry's Rebels, celebrating 50 years in rock and roll. Along with all the ups and downs, Larry still maintains a passion and a love for the only career he has ever had. Be watching tonight to win three double passes to a Blue Pop reunion on the 1st and 2nd of November. We welcome Larry Morris as our special guest on The Beat Goes On. Larry Morris, welcome to The Beat Goes On, a great classic baby boomer if ever there was one. Thank you very much, Gerard. It's a pleasure to be here, mate. Great generation, wasn't it? The baby boomer generation. We have, uh, well, we're both 66, aren't we? I found that, that out before we started talking. Yeah, yeah. August 4th, uh, 1947, I was born, yeah. Well, I was July the 3rd, so I was yeah. one month old before Larry Morris entered the world. Yeah, yeah. So you're a cancer. Uh, yeah. I'm a Leo. Yeah. yeah. Look at that hair, eh? How did you get all that hair, Larry? It's so Mum. unfair. Mum, yeah, yeah. Well, you'd <laughs> think that. I'd, it's a raffle, though, isn't it, all that? <laughs> um, you know, I'm, I'm just blessed with long hair and l lucky that I can still grow it. And both, you've got both mum and dad are alive, aren't they? Yes, yes. mum's 93 and dad's... Uh, Should we say hello to mum? Yeah, hello mum, <laughs> hello darling. Uh, she traded up, dad's uh, seven years younger than mum. Ooh. No flies on my mother. <laughs> and uh, you know, and they're both uh, in wonderful health. Mum's got a degenerative spine, sadly, but dad looks after her. He's a real a knight in shining armour and... Uh, I just love them, adore them, and I make a point of getting down there to see them once a month. Oh, where do they both live? Pataru. But uh, I was going to go down there and do my bit and, and sort of move in with them, but Dad wouldn't have a bar of it. He said, I can look after your mother quite well for another <laughs> few years yet, son. Yeah. So, and yeah. so your mum's 93? 93, yes. And your dad, he's seven years younger? Seven years younger yeah, than okay. mum, yeah. He's yeah. a spring chicken, isn't he? Well, yeah, and he's he's just really wonderful. He's, he's like a sage, my dad. He's um, full of wisdom and he's taught me so many things and give me some uh, great uh, great lessons in life. Now, were you able to listen to Dad around about the age of 16, 17, 18, 19 when you became a rebel, a Larry's rebel? Um, no, uh, I was on the road with the rebels. We, we, we were in, on the road. I never saw much of Mum and Dad from 16 on. Um, and we were over in Australia uh, quite early in our careers. And, uh, you know, so no, I wasn't sort of in the, around Mum and Dad uh, at that age. And then I got married uh, at 18 and um, so moved into my first apartment when we did come off the road with Sue and um, our daughter Kim, yeah. You should have taken your dad along on the on the tour to look after you, Larry, to make sure you weren't doing all those naughty things. No, Dad was too busy running his shop at Massey Road, at, uh, at 258 Massey Road, Mangary. They had a wonderful superette there and the Mad Butcher, his first butcher shop was just down the road. Wow. John Kerwin yeah. was working for him. Yeah. And uh, I saw Peter the other day, I, I did a guest spot at his... Peter Leach, what a wonderful guy. Oh, wonderful yeah. human being. Uh, he's mm. done so much for people and he did so much for us when I took 31 entertainers to East Timor years ago. Mm. Uh, right at the last minute, we didn't have the, uh, um, what do you call them, the um, shots for fever and malaria and stuff. Uh, it was one of those things the army hadn't told us we needed and Peter stepped up and paid the bill, more, like five grand. Wow. Just didn't hesitate. Um, just a wonderful human being. So I was at the lounge uh, last week at the game of the Panthers and unfortunately the Warriors lost, but uh, I sang a few songs for Peter and uh, I'd do anything for Peter. He's a wonderful man. Well, let's go back to the beginning. You were born in Auckland and yeah. whereabouts? Uh, I was born in uh, 120 John Street and uh, then we moved up to 141 later in life um, and uh, right opposite Vermont Street. and. Uh, Went to Richmond Road Primary School, yeah. um, very proud of that, and uh, it was a wonderful school. And some wonderful sportsmen came from that area, the Colhassie brothers, um, the Bailey brothers from Rugby League Stars, the Gutton Beals, also great oh. great sportsmen. I saw Nari the other day, he's an old friend from Vermont Street, and he said, oh, Larry, Ponsonby boy, always a Ponsonby boy. <laughs> and so, and I, the, it's just wonderful to be, uh, mm. to, know, to know that I've got some great friends from when I was a kid, you know. Well, then it would have been a lower socioeconomic area, wasn't it? Uh, Ponsonby and Grey Lynn in those days. Yeah, but yeah. Now, now it would be hard to buy a house there under a million dollars. Well, I certainly it? couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't afford to buy the house mum and dad lived in. And I think it was like 12 grand or something then. When it started off, yeah. Yeah, no, 1960, or, or it would have been 1959, 60, yeah. At some stage, you realised, I've got a voice, I can sing. When did that happen? The first inkling that Larry Morris was going to go into the music business. When I was nine, ten years old, um, I was miming Elvis Presley records, standing in front of a mirror and miming 
to Elvis's records and mum and dad saw me doing this and so they took me to a party and um, I, I became a bit of a star at this party. I think it was the novelty of a little fella wiggling his hips and stuff. But I was just miming to Elvis's records and then at one of these parties a few weeks later the record player broke down and uh, mum said, sing Larry. And uh, I said, I, I can't sing mum. And she said, oh yes you can. And that's when I realised that I actually could sing. And, uh, and that, that put that, the, the idea into your mind that you could do it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I wanted to be, uh, I wanted to sing uh, when I was very young, yeah. And then there was a wonderful story about you going along to an audition and you missed out, but yeah. you ended up in Larry's Rebels. Tell us that great story. Yeah, well, um, Johnny Watson um, was a regular at Mum and Dad's Dairy in Dairyland, um, as was Ray Wolf and Ray Columbus, God bless him. And uh, Johnny was uh, comparing around town and, and Mum uh, asked Johnny, could she, he organise an audition for Benny Levin with me? Uh, Johnny did that and uh, I went to the audition and I was backed by the Rebels and uh, I didn't get the gig, Benny uh, passed on me, but uh, the guys in the Rebels liked what I was doing. And, and they uh, approached you privately? Yeah, after the audition oh. and asked me would I like to come to the Columbia Church and sing with them the following Friday night and, uh, and I said I'd love to and I did and uh, the rest is history as they say. And you discovered that wonderful effect the girls flocked to see Larry and the Rebels. and uh, wow, Yes, yeah, I had never had girls uh, pay me as much attention as when I was singing <laughs> in the band. And I thought, oh, oh. I, I want to do this for a job. <laughs> why wouldn't you? I mean, why wouldn't you? you know? <laughs> yeah, to test her own film youth and, and uh, beautiful girls, mate. Mini skirts, yeah. Mary Quant. And, yeah, yeah. Oh. You were in Seventh Heaven. <laughs> yes, most definitely. I make no bones about that. It was a and, wonderful And up until time. that point, you hadn't been that successful with girls, but now they were they were there. For well, uh, no, they they weren't interested in me until I started singing. Yes, oh, I'm a, I think I was just an other than ordinary chubby young lad, you know. <laughs> and uh, but when I started singing in the band, whoa, it was a whole different trip. Mm. Now, how did you see the future? This was going to last forever, or? Uh, uh, or was it just a five-year uh, thing and it was... I never thought about any of that. That yeah. never came. We were having so, so much, much fun. fun. Yeah. Th that never entered my mindset. Um, how long is this going to last? Will it last? Mm. That never came into it. Well, we were just having so much fun and loving making records and, and uh, loving being creative and loving live performance and the screaming girl thing. And uh, now I, I didn't even think about that. And before we knew it, seven years had gone by and we'd had... A swagger hits and we were very famous. Yeah. Mm. Well, young singers then say, well, it's about time I got a proper job. And uh, they go and get a job and they become an accountant, a dentist. <laughs> well, that, they make you, a lot you, more money, um, yeah. especially if you're in New Zealand yeah. show business. But you've continued in the show business realm. 50 years 50 now. 50 years. So you've never been tempted to go and get a, an everyday type job. No, a lot of people have suggested I should, <laughs> especially my mum and dad at, on the odd occasion. But I've never had a desire, yeah. uh, and maybe it stems from a bit of laziness, I don't know. Um, I'm not really lazy, Gerard, but... Um, but you have no, to be enthusiastic I, about something before I, you do it. I, I love yeah. singing and I love being in a band, and I, I just wanted to be in a rock and roll band all my life, and I still am. Um, What's the buzz? What are you getting? That what's the payoff for you when you're singing and it's all, everything's going well? You can see the crowd in front of you and they're rocking. You can see them going and the band's sounding great. What's that payoff? The buzz is the band sounding great mm. and the band and being alive as a group, yeah. together as one, and the reaction that we get from the people. Mm. It's all about the audience. Yeah. Always has been. Is that addictive? Oh, mm. oh yeah. Um, especially for a Leo, I mean, I've got a, a you know, Leo ego. Um, I love entertaining people and seeing the effect that I have on them, yeah. Now, addictions have ruined lives, haven't they? And uh, you, ha you went down another route and uh, you, were, you were meeting people every day that said, Larry, try one of these. Uh, I, I don't go along with that peer pressure thing. I suppose it, in reality it is, but uh, you're surrounded by people who are doing it and uh, you don't want to be left out. But I did those things of my own accord. Mm. I got a heroin habit of my own accord. No one forced me to do it. Um, I'm glad it didn't last forever more. I'm glad that I, uh, my father guided me out of it. 
And so I, Dad came to the rescue in that oh, sense, yeah. Yeah, he did, and it's a, it's a lovely story. Uh, he came around um, to the house, it was in the days of milk bottles, and uh, there were four pints of milk in the fridge, and none of them had the silver foil cap on them. And he called me into the kitchen, he said, what's this about, son? I said, I've got a heroin habit, Dad. He said, what, what do you mean? What's that got to do with the milk bottles? I said, well, you use the milk bottle tops to chase the dragon. And he said, well, what do you want to do about this? I said, I, I want to get off, I need help. Mm. So he helped me. I've always wondered, what is it about heroin? That, what, what happens actually when the... It's the most wonderful it feeling. It is a wonderful feeling. Yeah, That's the and I don't want to be promoting this on television. No, no. Um, I, I, I say to kids, don't, don't go near it. It's, it the, the 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 catch is it was so bloody good yes, you stay with in the in the mm -hmm. zone with it and uh, um, I mean but I, but I don't want to say that to, to, because I hate the idea mm. of youngsters getting into it it's not a it's it's debilitating it's not good for you it will kill you eventually mm. and I don't recommend it to anybody and that's said with great bitterness today isn't it and when you think of your life would, would that be uh, no uh, I don't have any regrets you can't second guess all that stuff I mean I'm thrilled that my dad was there to get me off of it mm -hmm. uh, and my wife Helen um, um, without her and dad I, I wouldn't have got off of it like I did um, and I'm thrilled about that mm -hmm. but um, uh, I don't have any regrets you know we, you, we do things we make mistakes mm -hmm. we bounce back from them now today you're a healthy looking man, aren't you? So obviously it hasn't done you any harm physically. So. Well, I'm a, the straightest I've ever been in my life yeah, um, yeah. now. I'm, I mean, I'm totally straight. I don't, I don't do, uh, I don't even smoke pot anymore. I haven't had a smoke a pot for nearly nine months. Um, uh, I'm, I don't do dairy products anymore. Um, I don't have to take cholesterol pills anymore because I don't do dairy. I don't have a blood pressure problem because I don't eat salt anymore. Mm. Uh, I've just done things that my dear friend Alan Wade, um, bass player in my band, it was Billy T. James as MD for 10 years, the Wade, uh, he, he's, he guided me and he said, do these things, Larry, they'll be good for you. I never thought I would have the ability to not eat ice cream again, but I have and, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I'm, I feel wonderful, Gerard. Larry. Teach me how to not eat ice cream. No, teach me how to not eat ice cream. You've got to teach yourself. <laughs> I can't do that for you, Dewey. It, uh, it has got to be the most satisfying food in the world, oh, ice it's cream. wonderful. Don't yeah. talk about it. It's too <laughs> so you're right off the ice cream. Yeah, I haven't had any ice cream for a long time. Yeah. Oh, on my birthday, I had uh, a one uh, scoop of ice cream. Mm. Uh, um, yeah, but that's, uh, I don't do dairy anymore. Now, you're busy today, Larry. Uh, Extremely busy. Uh, got wonderful, lot, I've got it? lots on. I've... Um, I'm working with the, um, at the power station on uh, November 1st and 2nd, Friday and Saturday night for uh, Brent Eccles and uh, Paul Walker. Uh, it's a glue pot reunion show. They had one before, great success. I was away then and I couldn't do it, but I'm pleased to say I'm doing this one with Hammond Gamble. This is a glue pot reunion. Yeah, at the power station. Wow. Uh, Neil Edwards, mm. Hammond Gamble, Hello Sailor Big Band, mm. um, um, Mahia um, Blackmore, True to Chadwick, um, it'll be a magnificent, magnificent show. And Gerard, um, I, I've got a good idea. It'd be a good idea to give away three double passes to the Glue Pot uh, wow. Power Station gig. Our to audience, three of your listeners. baby boomers, yeah. would just love that. Well, it'd be fantastic. Well, let's think about it. The Glue Pot yeah. is, is baby boomer history, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, let's think of something. So it's a reunion at the power station. Yes, indeed. And what date is it on? No, Friday, November 1st and Saturday, November 2nd. Okay, and what about, uh, um, how many passes should we give away? Three. Three double passes? Yeah. Email Jared if the beat goes on. That's pretty simple. That and uh, in the subject line, just put Glue Pot Reunion, and we've got three double passes to give Fantastic. away. Fantastic. Thank you, Larry. No worries, oh, mate. Oh, yeah. wow, that's wonderful. Yeah. So the future's looking great for Larry Morris. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm really happy about life. Um, I have a uh, lady who's uh, writing my autobiography. Wow. Yeah. Um, uh, she's a doctor um, mm. in fine arts, and she's written books before. And... Um, uh, she's uh, very, very good and very onto it. She's going to do a go and interview all my mates. And the only stipulation I've made is that um, the book cannot be released until my mother and dad have passed away, because <laughs> I don't want my mother freaking out with uh, what I've really been up to. 
<laughs> and uh, but Mum must know all these things about Larry. Who she knows really, a lot of things, but yeah, not all, all of things. things yeah. You know, and, and you've you got know, to make the book a bit and, spicy, don't you? Well, it, you've got, I've got to tell everything. Yeah, yeah, I've got to talk about yeah. what happened when the ten years I was in Los Angeles. I don't want my mother knowing all about that. Yeah, yeah. It would freak her out. So um, and uh, but there's a uh, there's a good uh, side to this, Gerard. I was absolutely heartbroken when I broke up with my last partner. It mm. took me a long time to sort of, I went to Australia to try to get away from it. Mm. But uh, a girl said to me, um, you, you can run and hide everywhere, but you don't get away from your own emotions. Uh, you, you know, you could stay at home. You, you actually export your emotions, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And uh, I never, she was dead right about that. But it took me a long time to get over it. But um, uh, I've come through it and uh, I'm happy about it because this uh, wonderful, beautiful 38-year-old woman who's writing my book, uh, uh, we've, we've sort of fallen in love with each other. So it's, it's, I'm very, very fortunate. What is this Larry Morris charm? What is I this don't charm? know. I really <laughs> don't know. I mean, I'm 66, mate, and uh, we've spent a lot of time together researching She's because she's doing a real good job. And maybe it's that familiarity. I don't know, but um, she says she loves me, and that's good enough for me. Yeah, wonderful. Well, Larry, uh, I think you are a wonderful example of what this program's all about, the beat going on, the beat going on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we started this program because we always felt that our baby boomer generation, that once you left, once you made it to 50, that supposedly we were all finished, it was all over, but it's not true. The no. beat goes on, we're all... Mate, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, this band, I mean, I'm feeling as fit as a fiddle. Mm. All the guys in my band, they don't look like they're going to die tomorrow. <laughs> and I, I, I reckon in another four or five years, we'll be doing this, what the Stones are, and I'll still be out there yeah. uh, walking the boards in another five years. I have no intention of giving this up. I want to go like uh, Ricky did and Tommy did. I want to die singing. Yeah. Uh, I could think of nothing better. Otherwise, with singing your to your, yeah. Yeah, or singing at yeah. dying with your girlfriend while you're singing. Would, <laughs> that would be the ultimate, of course. Now, a great baby boomer test we always have, uh, I ask, um, you know, it defined their lives. Was it the Rolling Stones or the Beatles? That, no, the Beatles. Be, the Beatles be, for you. The Beatles for me and then Steely Dan later on, yeah. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Larry, what a pleasure to have you on The Beat Goes uh, On today. Thank you very much, And may the Gerard. beat keep going on for you for Larry Miles. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to be here, Thank you.